Welcome to the module on working effectively in intercultural environments, something we all do every day. For some of us, this might not be explicitly on our minds, but for others, it's central to how we work. For all of us, it's good to be intentional about how we are inclusive of all identities in our workspace. My name is Jorge and I'm a postdoc at the Jocelyn Diabetes Center, Harvard Medical School. I had my first taste of intercultural interactions when I moved from Mexico to the UK. Most of my colleagues were from different countries spanning all continents. My lab was big. Everyone was very approachable and open to learning about different cultures. Most of us were the sole representatives of our countries and cultures. The environment was quite unique relative to other places where I had trained in Mexico, where people were from different cultural backgrounds and identities, in part because we were from different parts of the country. But in the end, we were all Mexican with a unifying cultural identity. In more international settings, like in research institutions in the US, cultural differences and identities can be more contrasting. And the word culture can mean different things to different people. In this module, when we say intercultural, we are thinking about the different aspects of our background that define who we are. Those could be visible identities that are readily recognizable, invisible identities that we share or not, and the pieces of our background that have shaped our experiences, things like religious practices, our socioeconomic status, the languages that we speak, or where we've been educated. In this module, we will invite you to examine your own identities and reflect on how those enhance and affect the ways you collaborate. Yes, Sarah, and we also have to take into account that research groups are very dynamic. Labs go through phases of expanding and shrinking, and with this, interactions between members change. I consciously moved to a smaller lab for my postdoc, and curiously enough, another Mexican joined the lab two weeks later. Of course, we became quite close. I also interacted with the other members of the group, but not as much. Eleven months later, my Mexican friend left, and around the same time, others to whom I was close also moved on to other positions after finishing their fellowships. The remaining members of my lab were from the same country, and I had not built relationships outside the scientific one. In small communities like my lab, when one person leaves, it can make a huge difference, especially when you feel identified in more ways than just a shared academic interest to the ones that are now gone. For six years, I had not worked with a fellow Mexican. So for those 11 months, the shared identities added another dimension to my new experience of becoming a postdoc. But when it ended, I felt like I had forgotten how to belong to groups where I didn't share as much as I did with my friend. And that's funny because you worked in the same place the whole time, but it probably felt like the first day of school all over again. Yep. In this module, we're trying to capture the dynamic ways that people interact. In our virtual journal club, you will explore the literature related to microaggressions and implicit bias that can happen in research spaces. We will also feature Jorge and our colleague Aaron working together with me to reflect on case studies, as you would if you were taking this content at an in-person workshop at your local institution. Finally, you've heard some of my experiences in how I've reflected on my interactions with colleagues in my research space. Through our case studies, you'll reflect on how to be inclusive of others in the formal and informal environments you experience. We're inviting you into our Postdoc Academy community through the group discussions that we have and the layers of perspectives within this module.